CBIT Global Conference. Uh, I'm with you with Phil Zimmerman. Uh, as the creator and inventor of PGP, uh, you probably don't need any further introduction. Phil, uh, why is it still that complicated to convince people to secure their very private information? Well, I, I think that people are, are coming around. Uh, there's more awareness today than there was some years ago. I think the Snowden revelations have done a lot to, to uh, increase awareness. But we also see a constant uh, set of uh, news articles about break-ins and breaches of customer data. So I think there's an overall increase in awareness. Is there any chance to, to find a solution that doesn't require action of the user itself? So when they are lazy, uh, I mean in terms of any kind of software? Well, um, you know, PGP had difficulty uh, getting a lot of market penetration because Uh, you had to be aware as a user of how the keys are managed. But it is possible to do secure telephony in a way that does not require the user to think about it. Uh, the stuff that I've been working on for the past decade about secure telephony doesn't require the user to think about it much. You know, your mom could use it. Yeah. What, what surprises you the most if you think about privacy and the lack of privacy and some people say this is the end of privacy? What's, what surprises you in that discussion? Well, overall, there's, a, there's kind of a gradual erosion of privacy that largely comes from, I guess I would have to say, Moore's Law. Uh, because as we become more and more uh, plugged into uh, the Internet and, and where computing power increases, encroachments of our privacy uh, increase gradually. But, you know, in a, in a world of, uh, you know, uh, terrorism, governments tend to reach more uh, for Uh, surveillance, having pervasive surveillance, and so, um, you know, and 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 also we, you know, we're being attacked by foreign governments more. So overall, there's an erosion of privacy that just continues relentlessly, and it it takes a lot of work to try to to stop that. I work in technology, so you know, I tend to try to develop technology solutions or partial solutions. But we can't do this only with technology. We also have to do it in policy space. Uh, talking about government, so quite recently we had the case of Apple versus FBI. So what's your opinion about that? About that? I, I think it would be a, a mistake to, um, to get Apple to do what the FBI is trying to get them to do, to change the operating system to make it so that you can easily break into iPhones. Because then hundreds of millions of iPhone users would become vulnerable to that kind of software tool, which currently doesn't exist. Um, so uh, it, it would be in our in all of our interest if uh, if Apple could 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 continue to try to protect people's privacy. I mean, the, as time goes on, we're we're under constant attack. You know, our our data is under constant attack, um, and. We're doing all that we can to try to repel those attacks, but it's a it's kind of a lopsided um, battlefield. We need all the help we can get, and uh, you know, to to ask us to uh, undermine these protections, uh, I think is is a is a mistake. Uh, we, we will we will make ourselves vulnerable to attacks from uh, you know uh, China to Russia to uh, to you know. To other uh, to to criminal organizations. Uh. Phil Zimmerman, thank you very much.